Hello, magical people. My name is Luminix, and I would like to thank you so much for joining me here today. I hope that the universe has been treating you kindly since last we were together. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the upcoming full moon. We'll be talking a little bit about the some basic information about this full moon. Then I'll also be going over some astrology, and pff, this is... I think going to be a very powerful period of time and we'll also talk about the numerology then there will be a pick a card tarot reading and of course at the very end as per usual I'll be giving you a little bit of a personal update just telling you a little bit about what I've been up to lately and my plans for this upcoming full moon. Timestamps for all of those various segments will be in the description and in a comment below, so feel free to skip around as your little heart desires. Now, to start with the very basics, what is a full moon? A full moon is a time of peak intensity in the lunar cycle, and it is when the sun and the moon are in opposition to one another in the sky. So they are directly halfway across the zodiac from one another, which means in this case, since our sun is in Pisces, our moon is going to be halfway around the zodiac. And that brings us to Virgo. Now this moon in North America is often called the snow moon because this is of course a time of year where if you are likely to get snow at all, it might be right around now. Also though, it is sometimes called the hunger moon or the bear moon. And both of those also make sense. This is the last um, full moon of the zodiac cycle. And in fact, the last full moon of winter. So it is a time when people's coffers were most likely to become scarce when their harvests from the year before were at their likeliest to be, you know, at the very last of the last of the last of what's left. And with regard to it sometimes being called the bear moon, this is a time of year when there might be some bears who are arising a little bit early from their hibernation cycle. And of course, because it is sparse pickings in the natural world all the way around, everybody's coffers are a little low on sustenance at this time of year. Um, the bears, of course, will be doing more foraging and more likely to be seen. As I said, I believe that this full moon, this energy is feeling pretty powerful to me. And I think that makes sense because, as I mentioned, it is the last full moon of both the winter as well as... Actually, maybe I didn't say this yet, but I'm about to now. Um, it's the last full moon of the zodiac cycle. I think I did say that but maybe I didn't. And now I definitely have. <laughs> um, so this is a powerful time in general, because usually as we approach the end of a cycle and the larger the cycle is, the more powerfully we feel the impact of this energy, it marks a discernible ending and beginning in all the, the cyclical way of life and nature. So I think that this is typically a pretty powerful full moon because it is the last one of the year. And also, like I said, uh, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it is also the last one of the fall, or I'm sorry, last one of the winter. So it's at a time where things are about to move into a real growth cycle uh, in the natural world. And so we're at that peak time of sort of gestating all of our plans that we're making for spring. I'm a gardener, so like it's just that time of year where we're starting to put seeds in the ground and create new life and create new plans for what we're gonna do in the winter months and creep out of our homes and start to enjoy more daylight on a day-to-day -day basis. So I do feel like this is generally a pretty powerful full moon. But I think that with the some of the astrology of this one, it's looking like it's going to be uh, really, really powerful. Let's just say that. So I've got my notebook because you know how I, I go. Um, or if you're the first, this is the first time you're here, then how I go is that when there's too much astrology to remember, 
I just rely on my notebook. So my apologies as I gaze away from the camera. Um, so we've got a bunch of different aspects that we're going to cover here. Uh, we've got some oppositions. We've got a couple of squares. Uh, we've got a um, conjunction, trine, sextiles. So yeah, there's a lot going on. And we're not going to do a super deep dive into each thing, but the way I kind of wanted to bring us through this understanding of the astrology for this full moon, I'm starting with the oppositions. And the reason why I'm starting with the oppositions is because they are sometimes pretty tough energy. And by tough, what I mean is that, of course, being opposed, they are across the circle from each other at 180 degrees. And so these are energies that have an opposition. And so they're kind of like the two sides of a coin and they highlight areas where we need to find or where it would be most beneficial to find a um, compromise so that we can sort of move forward um, to, to bring those, those energies into harmony. So I'm going to start with the toughest stuff first because as with all full moons, when things are illuminated in a way that we don't get all of the time, it is an opportunity to shed light on things that typically remain in the darkness. So I feel like oppositions are a great place to maybe do a little bit of shadow work. So I've also come up with um, just a question or two in terms of self-inquiry that we can keep in mind with regards to these astrological aspects. So first we have the um, Sun in Pisces opposing the moon in Virgo, which is what makes it a full moon. So this is, uh, you know, the, the sun is our self, the moon is our emotional understandings. So a couple of questions we could ask ourselves with regards to this aspect are, am I bypassing emotions that seem messy or difficult? Or am I judging myself too harshly for either the, motion, the emotions that I have or the way that I feel about the emotions that I have. Because with the moon in Virgo, Virgo is a very analytical sign. Um, so we also have four oppositions. We have, again, the moon in Virgo coming up against the uh, Mercury in Pisces. And of course, Mercury is where our um, communication stems from, communication, teaching, learning, and such. So a couple of questions we can ask ourselves around that are, is the way that I communicate either internally or externally with other people um, lacking authenticity or truth, or is the way that I communicate, um, again, either internally or externally, and certainly the way that we show up in the world is is one of the ways in which we communicate with the outer world so it's kind of can be applied on a few levels um but is it um muddy or unclear either to myself or to others we also have moon and virgo again um coming up in opposition to saturn and pisces so are there feelings that, um that i have that i'm resistant to taking responsibility for um, and, or are there boundaries I could be, uh, better at upholding? So that's it. That's, that's the toughest part of it. Those are the toughest questions that we're going to have to ask ourselves, I think. Um, we're moving now into the squares and squares also reveal an obstacle or a challenge, but they are a bit less intense than oppositions. So first of all, we've got Venus and Aquarius, and that is squaring Jupiter and Taurus. And Jupiter is growth and expansion and luck and good fortune and optimism, all those good things. So a couple of questions we can ask ourselves here is, do I have relationships? And again, this can be either internally relationships with regards to aspects of ourself or various members of what I refer to as the Council of Self, um, which if Council of Self and the idea of talking to internal aspects of yourself is something that you're interested in. Leave a comment below. I'm happy to make a more in-depth video about it. I've hit on it in a couple of other videos, but anyhow. Um, but do the relations that I have internally or externally um, that I'm not allowing to, or I'm sorry, do I have relationships internally or externally that I'm not allowing to grow and expand or deepen? And 
Sometimes when we recognize that we are in a place where we're not allowing ourselves to be vulnerable in that way, that kind of points to a fear or an obstacle or a challenge we have with regards to um, our own selves and development. Um, also, we have as a square um, Mars in Aquarius and uh and again, Jupiter and Taurus. So Jupiter and Taurus, we already talked about. That's expansion, all that good stuff, good fortune, optimism. Um, coming up uh, with a square into Mars. And Mars is our sense of will and action and passion and drive. So a couple of questions we could ask ourselves here. Are there things that I do that openly conflict with what I say I want? Um, like, for example, will the actions that I take yield the outcomes that I desire? And now I think I'm going to, I should have interjected this sooner, um, but I think with any of these tougher questions, I think that it's really important, going back to one that I touched on uh, before, was am I judging yourself myself too harshly? Um, as you're going through these points of self-inquiry, should you decide to join me on this adventure, um, I think it really is important, uh, especially if you come up against things that you've been feeling resistant to or things that make you feel a little bit cringy toward yourself when you actually finally fully see them for the first time. Uh, I think it's really important to, again, treat yourself with, um, I mean, how do I end pretty much every video? Don't forget to be kind and gentle with yourself. And I really mean that. Um, and I mean that from a place of uh, deep, deep knowing. Self-judgment is uh, something I'm very comfortable with and, you know, conti still continue to struggle with. And it's interesting how I've uh, become more and more aware on my own journey of my own sense of internal judgment, just how uh, apparent that is in the way everybody else is doing that to themselves. Um, maybe not everybody else. Um, but it's, it's, I see it quite a bit is what I'm saying. So when you ask yourself a question like, will the actions I yield that yield, will the actions I, let me try that again. I'm probably not even going to edit this out because I feel like I always edit a lot. I have like 15 takes that you never even see where I say the beginning lines over and over again. And then at some point I just roll with it and, uh, it's, yeah, too much to try and edit everything. Anyways, um, will the actions I take yield the outcome I desire? If in asking yourself that, you plainly see that it is the case that it is not, that's, it's okay for you to still show up in love and support of yourself, even with that self-knowledge that is, uh, you know, less than rosy. So anyhow, uh, again, we're moving out of the square, so again, moving a little bit more towards more uh, neutral territory, and that is to conjunctions. And conjunctions and are when things are close to one another in the sky, and so the energy of those two things tends to merge and amplify. So you can see how that could be either good or bad. Um, and actually, we have a few here. So we've got Sun in Pisces and uh, Mercury in Pisces. So a couple of questions you can ask yourself here is, um, or I'm sorry, this is, we're, we're also mostly out of questions and more into noticings. Um, so you may find yourself talking, uh, and again, this is talking internally to yourself, or externally to other things um, about your dreams, um, or notice an increase in intuitive hits and messages and knowings. You may notice that your creativity is amped up. Um, so as you can see, that's, in my opinion, that's that's more than neutral. That's just outright good. That's, that's combining two really positive energies uh, in the best way. We also have the Sun in Pisces uh, conjunct to Saturn also in Pisces. Uh, that's, I don't know why I keep repeating it, but conjunctions when things are close to one another in the sky tend to be in the same sign. Uh, but we have, yeah, so Sun and Saturn both in Pisces. So you may find a renewed sense of determination, particularly re with regards to a creative endeavor, um, and this would be an excellent time to, uh, if you are wanting to tap into a sense of self-determination, specifically geared towards, uh, like if you have a particular outcome or project or thing that you're working towards that requires you to really, you know, 
have a, a firmer sense of self-discipline than you would normally take with other things in your life, then this would be a great time to tap into that energy as well. And then we have Venus and Mars both in Aquarius. So you may, of course, Venus, that's our relationships and our connections to one another. That's our love, romance, all of that stuff. Um, what we find beautiful. So you may find yourself taking action or wanting to take action or getting clarity around uh, actions that you may want to take with regards to your relationships. Um, okay, and now we're moving into the really great stuff. We're moving into trines and sextiles, and they are similar to one another with trines being the more like oomph filled aspect of the two, um, and they are beneficial, harmonious easings of energies, um, ease, easeful blendings of energies. So for trines, we've got Moon and Jupiter. I'm sorry, Moon and Jupiter? That doesn't even make sense, Lou. And you know what? You're right. It's Moon in Virgo uh, trining Jupiter in Taurus. So you may notice, and, and this is why I wanted to end with this stuff, um, because after coming through all of the more shadowy aspects of things that may be illuminated during this time, you may note a powerful sense of optimism and positive feelings and and also feeling positive about your own emotional state, so sort of in a meta kind of way. So leaning into things that make you feel good, especially again, you know, again, we've got our creativity that's likely turned up, um, but art, food, etc., um, our connections with people's all sorts of those good things. And with regards to, uh, yes, we have two sextiles, which again are similar to trines, but a little bit less intense, but they are, uh, again, beneficial um, easing and blending of, of energies. So we have Sun in Pisces and Jupiter in, tu in Taurus. Again, Jupiter, the energy, the uh, planet of expansion and optimism. So we are We've got some real energy for feeling good, feeling confident, feeling expansive as feeling like moving through the world in a way that is expansive, like and open to um, to good things that are bound to be coming your way. So optimism looms large. And then finally, we have Jupiter and Taurus uh, again. Um, sextiling Saturn in Pisces. And now Saturn is usually kind of a big baddie. Um, you know, that's like kind of like big daddy, like sit down, do your homework. Um, like it's it's all about self-discipline. Like Saturn is about limitations. Um, and, you know, I've, I've said it once. I'll say it again. I'm sure I will continue to say it. But maybe less and less in time goes on. Saturn is kind of just in general, not my favorite planet. <laughs> um, it points to a lot of things that I, I can see the value in, but that I also kind of struggle with in some ways. Um, so, but we have that Saturn and Pisces, Pisces and Jupiter and Taurus. So this is like seeing clear routes to your preferred desti destination, particularly if you have been feeling kind of stuck of late. Like if there's, if there's a thing that, um, you just kind of feel like you've been just sort of turning your wheels in the mud and not getting anywhere except deeper and deeper stuck in the mud. It might be a good time to take another look at that situation with fresh eyes and you might find yourself getting some clarity that you um, hadn't yet been able to get. So like I said, and with the good stuff. So to sum up, um, let's see. I already said that. Um, I already said that. Okay. Yes. Okay. So again, with this being the last moon of the zodiac year, we also get to take an opportunity to look back if we so choose over that last year and the teachings that we can glean from that time and also sort of make conscious choices to leave behind that which no longer serves. Um, so we see an opportunity here to really see ourselves in a more whole and holistic way, um, including the light and the dark. You know, like I said, we, we had a lot of 
di more difficult questions that we we're asking ourselves with the oppositions and squares. And yet, coming through that, there is remaining that sense of love and expansion and growth and optimism. So being able to hold ourselves gently and with care and com compassion, both our light and our dark, is something that is a real opportunity here, I do believe, with this coming full moon. Um, last, we also have the numerology, and this being 224, 2024. Uh, you add all of those numbers up, they become 16. You add those two numbers together and you, we get seven. And seven also came up recently. I can't remember if it was a new moon or a full moon, but it was one of them. And uh, seven is the number of creativity. Again, just another another way in which that creativity knob is kind of just being turned up just a little bit. Uh, creativity, intuition, um, it's a spiritual number that speaks to mystery and knowledge, depth and wisdom, um, deeper truths. So again, some real opportunities here. And now, having gotten through all of that, we are going to, <clears throat> let me try that again. And now, having gotten through all of that, we are going to jump to the readings. Okay. So for the readings, we have three pick a cards for you to choose from. Get all of my disclaimers out of the way. If you're liking this video, please give it a thumbs up if you so choose. Um, but uh, let's see, disclaimers. So take what resonates and leave the rest. Uh, these are general readings. And of course, a reading is really for me, uh, I always kind of think of it as just more opportunities for you to get a better understanding of yourself if only by your reaction to the reading that's that's being had. So it's it's one of those things where you get to take from it anything that you want. Uh, so take what resonates, leave the rest is the quick way to say that. And um, you can watch one, you can watch two, you can watch all three. It is entirely up to you. You will notice here in one of the corners by the time I edit this, there is already an inset. Um, I will also have four or five seconds of just silence with a larger picture of the tokens but before we get to that i'm going to also give you another view of them so reading one and it is kind of difficult to see from the photo which is why i want to do this but it is a bell and it's a bell with a really beautiful sound and a lot of really nice resonance and res residence resonance um i think it is cast iron so even though it is tiny it is mighty and rather uh mass on the other end of that spectrum, we have for reading two as a token, we have this feather, which was a donation from one of my crow friends. Um, and it is, I don't know, I know there is a way, if somebody knows their bird stuff, there is a way to tell which feathers come from where, but I do not have that but regardless it is beautiful and it is soft and it has very nice light play which is an excellent segue i'm killing it with the segues from token to token um light play is this for token number three this is a piece of um amethyst and i doubt that the camera will do it justice but as you can see as i move it around it's got a little bit of twinkliness to it and there's a ton of smaller crystals in there and so it does have a lot of beautiful light playing there and that is the token for reading three are there any other things that I wanted to say generally before I got to the readings. Oh, yeah. So, and I probably will say this also at the beginning of each reading, but um, I kind of, what I set it up is we've got your energy or, yeah, your energy going into this full moon period and full moons are at their peak three days before day of and three days after. So it's like several days that you know, for some of us, the energy gets earlier, for some it hits later. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's as unique as a menstrual cycle. <laughs> and there go half the men. <laughs> Sorry if anybody found that offensive in any way, but it is really kind of as unique as a menstrual cycle. So I apologize if it made you uncomfortable, but it's, it's definitely true. Anyhow, um, 
Yeah. So uh, there could be several days where this full moon energy is at its peak to you personally. And um, shoot, what was the point I was going to make? Um, oh, yes. So we've got your energy going into the full moon. Um, then I'm going to also, I pulled some tarot cards for the predominant energies that um, you're being asked to notice that are coming into your space uh, during this full moon. And then just sort of more um, like advice for things to uh, pay attention to or notice in yourself or notice in your environment or whatever. <coughs> Pardon me. So that's sort of the general stru structure for the readings. And as per usual, it is a combination of both tarot and oracle. And having said that, we are going to just go ahead and jump right in to reading one. Hello, group one. If you selected this beautiful little bell, then this is in fact going to be your reading. And like I said, we've got a combination. I'll try and get them where, I mean, they will be upside down, but um, where you can see them. We've got a combination here of both tarot and oracle. I'm kind of pulling them backwards from where I wanted to start. Um, so first I want to look at, we've got your energy right now. So energy going into this full moon period for you, group one. We have, ooh, nice. We have the Seeker of Boons and the Green Mother, which is also known in other decks as the Empress card. And the Seeker of Boons is the Queen of Pentacles. So that's some pretty big energy right there. So coming into this time of the full moon, um, I see lots of nurturing and tending happening. Um, oh, what's interesting though, is what is actually coming up with these two cards, which is not actually a part necessarily of their meaning. Um, but with the Queen of Pentacles, so here we have the Empress and she is, you know, got this, you know, child on her lap and taking care of her child. But I almost feel like maybe there's a part of you that um, is doing a very good job at one thing, but also feeling like um, you maybe had a little bit more autonomy or had a little bit more time to do some things um, kind of like on your own. So like, you know, this, this Empress energy may not necessarily be uh, like a kid, it could just be something that you are tasked with tending to. So this could be a job, maybe your job is really intense lately and you're wishing that you had more time um, to be leisurely um, or, you know, you're wishing you had more time just to go take a walk and look at things that you find beautiful. Um, and, you know, the seeker of boons is, is a healer like this. This person is out there, um, she is harvesting the lichen. She is a very wise being. Um, so I feel like there's, and the reason why I kind of got this is when I when I put these cards down, like right next to each other, there's just like, it almost, in my mind, it almost shows, shows up kind of like a, this is you here, and you don't have to be a female person. This is just energy. Um, but um, this is like you here, but there's like something else that's that's missing that you're kind of like daydreaming about in a way. So, um, okay. So for the energy coming at you during the full moon, ooh, we have the Page of Wands and the Six of Swords. Interesting. Interesting. So we're going to start with the Six of Swords. Um, so Six of Swords is very much the energy of uh, moving beyond something and sometimes it's actually even literally moving but in you know it is also swords so you know a lot of times it's more of a, a, a ephemeral and less a literal thing um but that you know it's it's like leaving things behind um like literally um making a choice to move yourself towards a future that you feel is brighter for you than the one offered by staying where you are. And Page of Wands, like, this is, I mean, there's a lot of inspiration in this card and it's new inspiration too. Um, there's, I mean, it's, it's interesting looking how just the color in these two cards is so vivid. 
um, you know, and like the, the, the green in this card is kind of, you know, mirrored here at the top of this one, but it's so predominantly that bold yellow, that cheerful, that like, almost like sun energy, like it's very creative um, energy. Um, so yeah, I feel like this full moon is is going to show you creative ways to uh, move from where you could be by staying exactly where you are to moving to where you could could be in a like like yeah putting yourself towards a brighter path in in whatever way that means to you um okay so now we are going to look at the for two for the two cards that we pulled from the tarot for the like advice cards we have first the hermit taking some time alone. We also have the Daughter of Roots, and I love this deck so much because this is just so accurate. Like, the the Roots, that's our pentacles, that's our doing, um, that's our very, like, day-to-day -day concrete reality sort of stuff. And Daughters are the same as Pages, actually. They're just different language. So sort of similar to this being, like, nascent and very effervescent and very, like, initiating stages kind of energy. Um, this is also that same sort of energy, has that same energy of newness. So there's, like, you know, the, the advice overall is to take some time, like the Hermit energy, like taking some time to really, um, do a deep dive within and and check yourself with yourself first and you know sort of removing yourself from the situation on purpose uh to do that um okay so now let's take a look at we've got so many oracle cards all right first of all we have dog spirit being loyal to what you love and i love that this is coming up i love that this is coming up too because i feel like like that first energy that came up with the um, with the Green Mother and the Seeker Boons, you know, again, I feel like it's not like there's anything that's necessarily like super awful bad because like the Empress is like beautiful, beautiful energy. But like, I don't know, I just I keep getting this feeling of like also wanting something beyond what's right there. We have also rest. Ooh, I like that backing up the hermit energy. Kind of hard to read this one, but I assure you it does say rest. And then we also have um, don't dim to fit in. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? So yeah, I feel like I feel like this full moon group one is really a, a, a like truly. Should you decide to go down this path, it really is um, an opportunity for doing a lot of internal work um, and and getting some clarity and looking at things in maybe a little bit of a creative way, uh, which makes sense because like, I don't know, with this don't dim your light, don't dim to fit in, I feel like maybe that's something that you've had to do before um, and that is is part of this process. Um, for hummingbird cards, we have the sparkly jewels, sparkling jewels. Uh, you've tapped into the universe, universe's infinite flow of abundance, accept your treasures and with open wings and a grateful heart. Aww. Sorry, it's very tiny, very tiny reading. Um, and my eyes are not as young as they used to be, but that is a beautiful hummingbird. That looks kind of like a hummingbird. I wonder what kind that is. That's a ruby neck. They're a uh, ruby threaded. Maybe that's not the kind we get here. Anyways, doesn't matter. Um, and then for the final card that we have, we have the Pachamama card. And this deck, I'm actually going to read from the book itself. So we have the Essence. Pachamama represents the unconditional love that the earth has for all her children, including the stones, the plants, the animals, and humans. She is the goddess of earth, also known as Gaia. Oh, so much goddess energy here. Um, who pervades all creation in our planet. 
Thanks to Pachamama, our timeless soul can experience life in a biological body. The joy and pain we taste during our brief time on Earth are invitations to discover the boundless love of Pachamama. The invitation, you are a child of the Earth. Now is the time to eat right, love right, and be joyous regardless of the circumstances you may find yourself in. Be grateful for your life, your body, and all that nourishes you. Pachamama invites you to relish each breath, embrace your joy and your pain equally, and discover love through both. Let Pachamama know how much you appreciate all her blessings with an act of service such as planting a tree, helping save an endangered species, or protecting the ocean. And it's also, like I said, it's we're getting to, to almost spring. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe planting some seeds, uh, either physically or metaphorically, would be helpful during this time. But it's interesting. I feel like, you know, again, that energy of, you know, taking first steps to do things that are grounding, um, that are real, that will bring you closer to your love. And again, with that, like, yeah, that dog spirit of being loyal to what you love. And sometimes it can be, it can be hard to do. Uh, it sounds like it should be the easiest thing in the world, but the demand of life sometimes makes it difficult for we to, for us to, for we to, for us to really foster um, the things that, that really keep our talks clean keep our keep our clocks ticking in some way you know the things that give us our reason to be but anyhow um i hope group one that you have found this helpful my magical bell friends i really do think this is a great opportunity for you to yeah take Take the time that you need to give yourself, to allow yourself to rest, to allow yourself to go within and get that and, and be ready for that energy of like creative and new expansive understandings of how you can leave behind what you want to leave behind and move that much closer to where you want to go. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you find it inspirational. It feels like a very inspirational reading, which is, uh, you know, I never, I try not to have expectations of, of what kind of energies are going to come up because, uh, it, I mean, there's, it's just a lot of cards. It could go so many different ways. Um, but this does feel like, yeah, this feels like there, there's real opportunity for you here to uh, move towards places of real beauty. And that is for sure something to be grateful for. And I do think, just as a final note, that gratitude coming up in two cards, like whenever I see themes re repeated, like rest and hermit, the gratitude from Pachamama and the gratitude from the hummingbird card, um, the, you know, being loyal to what you love and not letting your light dim. When I see things like that repeated, um, that tells me that, that that's really what's at the heart of, of the messages that I need to convey to you. So, my magical friends, I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to be kind and gentle with yourself. Let me try that again. Don't forget to be kind and gentle with yourselves, and I will see you soon. Hello, magical group two. If you selected this beautiful feather from a crow friend, then this is in fact going to be your reading. And as I said, we've got a combination here of tarot cards and oracle cards. I'm going to do it properly this time. And we are going to start with the tarot cards that indicate your sort of energy going into the full moon. Ooh, very nice. Okay. Okay. All right. I see. I see. I see. All right. So the first card we have is the Nine of Visions, which is also known as the Nine of Cups. And this is a card of great abundance. But along with it comes the energy of the Liar. And this is the energy of, uh, I mean, this card in other decks is called the Devil. So this is, you know, the card of Deceit. 
in, I mean, you know, called a liar. Um, but it also sometimes is the card of um, indulging for things that aren't good for you. It's sometimes um, on a spiritual plane, it's putting physical desires above your spiritual needs. So it can show up in a lot of different ways. But I do feel like your energy kind of coming into this full moon, there is, there is some area of, of your life. Uh, oh, let me, hmm. There is an area of your life where there is great abundance. And yet there's something about There's something about that that isn't quite truthful. Or, you know what, I feel like someone out there who sees this video someday or some people out there who see this video someday, I feel like for some of you, this is more the energy of like overindulgence and like being in a place where you can overindulgent be being in a place where you can be overindulgent because you are in a place of abundance that that's it so we don't we don't have to have any judgment around that at all um okay so let's see for the energy of the full moon that is going to be coming into your space we have the knight of pentacles Ooh, very steadfast energy. Ooh, interesting. And the Eight of Cups. And the Eight of, Eight of Cups, in some ways, it is a card of loss. Or having, having, uh, there has been a loss. Like, the loss has already happened. And, um, it's more like walking away from a loss, having learned your lessons from it. And, you know, like I said, that, that Knight of Pentacles, this is very steadfast energy. This is energy of stability and reliability and maybe not the quickest moving energy, but there is forward movement along with it. And it's forward movement that won't be lost because it is so methodical in the way that it moves you forward. So that is pretty cool. Alright, so now we're going to pull the sort of advice cards. Um, and, ooh, hot damn. Oh, group two, fuck. Pardon my language. Alright, so we're going to, uh, yeah, we're going to start with the tough stuff, because that's what we do. We rip the band-aid, and we have the tower and the world. So, group two, my feathered friends, I feel like there is something that the best medicine you can get from this uh, thing is to just recognize that the tower is going to fall and it needs to be done like that. We also have B spirit, sweet results await. So I feel like for advice so far, this sounds very confusing. We also have truth. We have Akasha. Your guidance is divinely guided. For hummingbird spirit, we have natural instincts you know which way to fly. Pretty colors on that card. And we have the Earth Keeper. And for this card, I'm going to actually read a little bit from the book. And then we're going to talk about it. Okay. It's 18, is in fact, before 20. All right, we have the essence of the Earth Keeper. Just as you, you're involved in co-creating your world, you are also responsible for its well-being. The Earth Keepers are dedicated to the stewardship of the Earth and all life. They choose to hold the sacred dream of a planet where all beings live in peace and where the rivers and the air are clean. Remember that everything you do has an impact for seven generations. The invitation. 
You have outgrown your small dreams of success and achievement and are ready to dream big with possibilities beyond your wildest expectations. Take on the mantle of the Earth Keeper and reach out to a friend in need whom you may not have been in touch with for some time. Take care of your pets and feed the strays that come by. Clean up your yard as this is a reflection of your relationship to the Earth. Grow the sacred dream and your personal life will flourish. Remember, it's not about me, me as in quotes, any longer. This is very interesting group too. And I would be deeply curious because I do feel like there's some powerful, like really transformative stuff available for you here and what's most interesting is i'm feeling like most of that energy of your is yours like it's not like the energy of the full moon is gonna like whack you in a way like and the reason that i say that is that like of the three major arcana that came up they came up with regards to like um either where you are or a possible suggested uh like way of managing the energy so that feels to me like in some ways you are on the cusp of of some deep knowing um that yeah and it's funny i feel like i said this in reading one too but i feel like when themes are repeated <coughs> it kind of points to um it kind of points to uh, the importance of that theme. And one of the themes that seems to be coming up here is truth. And actually, it's coming up three times because it's also coming up in the liar. Because you can't, I mean, if there isn't another side of the coin, then what good is the coin? I mean, can you have a one-sided coin? I don't know. That's a math problem, I think. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that I feel like there is some knowing that you already have in some way, but it's like, I don't know. This is kind of harking, harking back in my mind to one of the questions from the astrological part of it uh, that I was talking about earlier and that kind of energy of, um, you know, are there things that I'm doing that I know for certain are not going to yield anywhere near the outcomes that I want because they're just like not even in the same ballpark. Um, and, you know, I feel like maybe there's something along those lines of that you've kind of been aware of for a while. And like, maybe that's one of the reasons why there is this kind of like overindulgence because you're actually about to like snap your chains to it um, and just let it be done. And that is going to uh, be a relief in some ways. Uh, you know, this B energy of sweet results relate, this Earth Keeper energy of having like graduated in a way of graduated isn't the right word, but it kind of has this energy of like leveling up to it. Like all of this has this energy of leveling up and of like, you know, major cycles ending because that's kind of what the world is all about is. Uh, you know, this is the last card of the Major Arcana, and so it is the card that ends it all and begins it all. You know, where there is an ending, there is a beginning. So I think that's probably why this B one came up, is I feel like, you know, the tower is usually not... I mean... It's not usually super pleasant to experience, you know, like, um, tower, the, the tower falls because it has to, it wasn't made to last. It wasn't constructed in a way that, uh, that it will, that it actually really makes sense. And so it has to come down so that you can, uh, rebuild and rebuild with all of the knowledge that you didn't have the first time around. Um, my goodness, group two, I'm feeling like, you know, I said it earlier, I feel like this, this full moon could be a really powerful time. And I feel like, it, you know, should, should you choose to accept it, that is definitely on the table there for you. So my magical friend, um, 
you know, I know I end every, and every, uh, video or reading with don't forget to be kind and gentle with yourselves. But, uh, you know, I feel like it would be especially beneficial for you to keep that in mind. And, you know, as I'm kind of looking at these two cards in particular, I feel like heart chakra energy is coming in pretty big here. So yeah, don't forget to be kind and gentle with yourselves. Try and hold yourself in uh, a place of love and caring. And uh, if you are a person who is prone to self-judgment, then um, even if you can't stop yourself from doing it, uh, at least try to notice that, that it's happening. Sometimes the noticing of a thing is the first step in being able to sort of detach from it. Um, so yeah, I'll say it again. Don't forget to be kind and gentle with yourselves. It's super, super important. And I will see you soon. Hello, magical people. If you selected this sparkly little amethyst token, then this, in fact, is going to be your reading. So again, we're going to kind of take a look at your energy going into this moon, full moon period, and then we're going to take a look at energy kind of coming at you during this full moon period, and then just sort of like advice, should you choose to accept it from the cards, about how to interact with that energy. It's funny, for each of the three readings, I've like flipped the cards and, and you know, kind of done it differently. All right, but, uh, it's just the way of it. Okay, so we are starting off with your energy. We've got the Keeper of Visions and the Magician card. You're in a place of being, um, like, really emotionally stable, and you're, like, getting shit done. Like, you're making it happen. I feel like you're, right now, overall, in, in a pretty good place. And, like... Just kind of like doing your thing, like you've been through some stuff, which is how you became the Keeper of Visions. Um, the Keeper of Visions, I'm sorry, I don't think I said this yet. That is the um, King of Cups energy. And so kings, you know, of the of the core cards, the kings and queens are the more ascended version of it. So like they have developed mastery over a thing. So, and I feel like that you being in this good emotional place is really integral to that magician energy. Like that's one of the backdrops that's kind of letting you do so much is that you're taking care of yourself emotionally like as it is right now. Um, so for energy that we've got coming kind of into your space during the full moon, we have the emperor and the queen of cups. Mm -hmm. Lots of, uh, that's a big energy there. So we've got like, all right, so Ma the Emperor is like divine masculine emperor energy. Like this is the energy of being a beneficial steward to uh, things that you're responsible for taking care of. This is like having, you know, healthy, flexible boundaries with people. Um, I mean, the Emperor, emperor can also be a tyrant um, at times. That's his like dark aspect. Uh, you know, but in Queen of Cups, every every card, of course, has its, like, darker aspect. But I'm feeling that this is more the, like, higher aspects of, like, this full moon is going to give opportunities to um, let you look at some boundaries. I feel like with this Queen of Cups energy, so now you've got both the King of Cups and the Queen of Cups showing up in this reading already. So I feel like um, you may notice that there's some heightened emotions during this time. Um, okay, so... For your kind of advice card about, like, what to do with this, like, you're in a good place, you're getting things done, now there's this, like, opportunity to take a leadership role and kind of put yourself out there in a way, and um, it's something that feels really good. Like, the Queen of Cups is, she's she's kind of, in my opinion, the, the sort of, like, quietest of the queens, uh, she's it's 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 kind of introverted energy, um, like she's not like 
yeah, she's very, con it's very contemplative energy. So I feel like there are some real opportunities for you to do some thinking about taking like all of this hard work that you've done to put yourself into this like king of cups energy and like emotional stability and like manifesting things and like doing things for yourself and like your life in general. Um, I feel like, you know, that kind of sets this really amazing backdrop to maybe for the first time uh, for you, perhaps in some ways, like step into a leadership role or like step out of the shadows in some way is kind of the feeling that I'm getting. Um, anyways, so for your advice for this, we've got inspiration. We've got the Ace of Feathers, which is otherwise known as the Ace of Wands. And we also have the two, no, I'm sorry, the three of feathers, which is also known as the three of wands. In this deck, they call it vantage. And so, all right, so as possible ways to uh, handle this energy, if you want, or work with this energy, if that's an adventure you decide to undertake, um, it would be a great time to maybe do a little bit of brainstorming and thinking about, all right, well, if I'm going to step into a little bit of a leader role in some way, then like, what, 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 what does that mean? Like, where is that something that I want to like, uh, the three of wands is kind of like a very zoomed out card, like very like future looking card. It's very much like, I mean, that's why they call it vantage here is because you just look at the perspective here, like there's a whole horizon available. So it's not, this is less about looking at the steps that are directly in front of you and trying to get, oh, there's Mr. Man, um, and trying to instead get a better uh, idea of the um, entire uh, landscape is what I guess I'm trying to say. For oracle cards, oh, Mr. Man, you're going to make things complicated. Please don't make things complicated. I know, I know. Um, for oracle cards, we have Chameleon Spirit, Act As If, mm, which is kind of, in some ways to me, bringing up this idea of maybe this is the first time of like stepping into a new role, like a, yeah, a new role for you. Uh, we also have, what does that say? That says Childhood. We do the can you please not? Thank you, Mr. Man. Um, we also have for a here he comes again. Cause he is persistent. We also have a bird bath for a hummingbird oracle. We have cleanse your dusty wings so you can fly more freely. Mm. We have priestess. How are you being called to step up and lead? Oh my god. Gosh, group three. And I feel like I said this. I, didn't, I don't feel like I said this. I definitely know for a fact I said this during both reading one and reading two. So it's interesting that so many themes are being repeated during these readings. But it is true that when I when I see a certain theme repeated multiple times within a reading, that really tells me that that's kind of like the, the sort of crux of, of the messages in the reading. Um, so we have, yes, Priestess, how are you being called to step up and lead? So obviously leadership with whether you're looking at it from a feminine and receptive intuitive kind of energy or with further from a masculine fire, like more like Mars energy, um, Regardless of how you actually allow that to show up, you are wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly being invited to step into a leadership role. I think it's interesting with this um, childhood card coming up. I'm wondering, and I'd be curious to know what this means, but I feel like, so first of all, there's this like green egg going on here and all of these cute little hearts coming out of it. And like, I feel like maybe there's something that you would find beneficial about a, a younger experience to gain some of that sense of inspiration, that ace of one's energy. And now we also have the medicine wheel as a final oracle card. And, oh, it kind of looks like, it looks like a big Mr. Man, doesn't it? Buddy, look up at the camera. See, don't that kind of look like him? Oh, 
Oh, cute. Maybe that's why he showed up during reading three. Um, was just to talk to you about Amethyst Brands. All right, so we are going to read from the book for this. It's 35. All right, the essence. The medicine wheel is a sacred hoop. See, let me try that again. The medicine wheel is a sacred hoop with the four cardinal directions well marked. It represents the cycle of life, the cycles of nature, and the circular pattern of our cosmos. It has been used for millennia in indigenous cultures to bring harmony and well-being to the village. Its directions symbolize the four steps the shaman takes to become a power person of power and wisdom. The invitation. To manifest clear blue skies in your life, it is important that you take a look at certain aspects of your being. Enter the medicine wheel from the south and reflect on how you are still clinging to events from the past. Ooh, harkening back to that childhood one. Um, continue to the west and notice which relationships are toxic and drain your energy. Step into the north and ask yourself, do I know my passion and show it? End at the east direction, visualizing how you want to live the next chapter of your life. It is up to you how much time you spend in each direction, minutes, days, or months. But when you are done, make sure to step outside the wheel and contemplate your journey. Wow, holy heck. Okay. Group three. I feel like, you know, I, I said during the astrology, I feel like this is a, this full moon in general, full, in general is a powerful time. It's coming at the end of a big cycle. It's, you know, it's our last one of the year. It's the last one of winter if you're in North America. Um, I guess that makes it the last one of uh, summer if you are in, uh, did I say North America? I meant the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and you're getting ready to head into your autumnal equinox rather than your vernal equinox if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. But regardless, it is a time when cycles are ending. Um, and that can be pretty powerful in and of itself. And I feel like this reading here is a pretty good indication of that. And like, especially where you are already like coming into this from being in a pretty grounded place, this really is a, a, a super major opportunity for you to Yeah, step into a new role some way. And like being a leader doesn't necessarily mean that, um, you know, you're you're literally out there like, I don't know, leading a thing, you know, leading a, a, a new, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't know, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but you know, it's, it's not like that necessarily, but oh my, you're such a big baby. You're such a big baby. Um, yeah, so it doesn't necessarily have to be like leadership, like in an obvious way that like, a, you know, a general is a leader or things like that. But, you know, it could even be just within your own existing um, family system or a social circle or something like that. Just it's just kind of like stepping into this new energy of leadership. And when one is a leader, um, you know, they've done the work. They've, you know, done the work to get them to this, get themselves to this place of stability and being able to do the things that you want to do and have the things that you want to have and get the things done that you want to or need to get done. Um, so it's, it's, it's almost like living by example. Like it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to like do any specific thing. It's more about a perception shift. It, it, you know, it, it, it I feel like it's one of those like very subtle energies that is also very powerful. But regardless, that's all like right here for you. This opportunity to take all of the work that you've done into uh, getting to where you are now. 
and letting that direct you to finding your next step along the way, looking far into the future. Like, this is like big planning time, you know, um, big, like, yeah, that, that three of wands energy of looking beyond. And what did this say again? Um, cleanse your dusty, wi dusty wings so you can fly more freely. So, yeah, I feel like, I feel like group theory, this is really an opp opportunity for you to like really let yourself shine in a way that maybe you've never let yourself do before, or maybe you've never felt like you deserve that before, but like you do, um, you do, that's just, you do, you know, like there's, there's, there's been a lot that's come before this point and there's a lot that will come after it, but this is a moment where there can be a shift and you can step into a self leadership role. I, I think maybe that's what I was trying to say earlier. How simple self leadership. Uh, you don't have to be out there, you know, leading some cause or large or small. This can really, uh, and most importantly is about self leadership because that's kind of where all leadership starts from. I think is the self I'd have to think about that some, more, but that sounds right. And anyways, that was my stomach rumbling. So, um, and he is obviously here, which tells me that this took me longer to record than I thought it was going to take. And, uh, it's past their dinner time. Yeah. Is it time, is it time for dinner? Is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> yeah, you sweet guy. So group three, sorry about that. Uh, just being cute with my Mr. Kitty. Um, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found it interesting. I do feel like this is uh, like, yeah, this is a good time for you to give yourself a pat on the back. I feel, you know, let really let yourself shine. Uh, there's no reason not to. You deserve it. Until next time, don't forget to be kind and gentle with yourselves. And I will see you soon. Oh, Hello, magical people, and thanks so much for sticking around or cooking ahead to this last part here. I just wanted to share a little bit about how I'll be spending my full moon and also just a little bit about what I've been up to lately. So I had a birthday last week. Huh. I am now 49, and as I've mentioned plenty of times in this video, it's time to get ready for spring. So what I've been spending some time on lately is just going through my seeds from last year, trying to get things organized. I'm a little bit behind because I pretty much always am, um, but not too, too bad. Um, and I've been ordering some new seeds. If you are a gardener, let me know below what you like to grow. I have been, um, Super sad lately because I think that last frost killed off my artichoke plant, which I've had for like eight years. Uh, it just, the whole thing turned to mush and I haven't seen any new growth coming since then. And it's been over a month. So I've seen lots of other things growing in the air, but I've seen no growth come out of that artichoke. So I'm kicking myself a little bit for not doing a better job of um, offering it some protection. There have been so many other freezes in the last eight years or 10 years that I've lived here that, or, but I haven't had the the entire time um, but there have been so many other freezes during that time that I guess I thought it was more impervious than it is which I guess I should have known it isn't because uh, I don't yeah anyway I should have but I didn't um, so I have uh, some artichoke starts that I'll be working on especially and that's probably one of my more favorite things to grow although I think I could probably say that about 30 other things so that's not really saying much of anything except that I like to grow stuff. But anyways, so one of my favorite parts about growing things though is the germination stage. So even though it requires some organizing um, or you end up having no idea what you're growing, which I've done that before and that's just kind of stressful in another way that I didn't enjoy, but um, it does require a little bit of organization, which I do find a little annoying, but I guess sometimes, uh, you know, helpful. Uh -huh. So I've been trying to get things like that organized and I'll be starting some starts. Uh, like I said, I'm already behind. I should have done it already. And I did get some seeds outside in the ground. I did get, did get some peas in the ground and I have some other peas that I put in the um, 
just to germinate in like a wet cloth and I'll probably put those in the ground shortly after they germinate uh, but I just wanted to give them a little bit of a head start anyways because the ground is still getting pretty chilly at night and aside of that yeah I'm sure I have we'll have more actual videos coming up in the future about different things that I'm growing because I usually kind of go a little bit um I just get a little bit too idealistic with it and sometimes bite off more than I can chew. And if that is also the way you garden, please let me know below. Um, and yeah, side of that, so what I will be doing for this coming full moon, I'm very excited. So my favorite dance party that happens every month, and I go every month, um, but is coming this Saturday. And like I said, I just had a birthday last week. So uh, this weekend is going to, I'm sort of using that, um, dance party as a sort of backdrop for my birthday so or my birthday party so i'm looking forward to getting to see a lot of lovely wonderful beautiful amazing people that i care about a whole lot um as well as probably a bunch of people that i don't know very well um and because that's kind of what happened that dance party um and yeah i'm just i'm really looking forward to it i think it'll be fun um i didn't even know when i picked that day that it was going to be the full moon honestly i just picked that day because i was like oh it's my favorite dance party that night i want to go to that and if i can uh get other people to come along with me that would make it even better um so yeah i didn't even know it was the full moon until after the fact and then uh once I started looking at the astrology for the full moon, I got even more excited because I think it's going to be a really fun time. Um, I think it's going to be a good time to hang out with people that I love and care about and like to have fun with. And I think it is going to be just a nice experience, just a nice, pleasant social experience that's probably going to be like super overwhelming um, and I'll probably be super exhausted the next day. Uh, but it will be worth every second of it. So that is what I am doing on my full moon. Probably earlier in the day, I'll try and spend some quiet time and kind of like, uh, I do like to observe the full moon just from a sort of like more prayerful place, I guess. Uh, so it's not always just about partying. Uh, it's very rarely just about partying if you're me, but sometimes a little bit. Um, but yeah, so I think I'll probably do that a little bit earlier in the day and even just in doing the research for this full moon, um, you know, it's already kind of like bringing up a lot of interesting, fun conversations. <laughs> um, I kind of said that with a little bit of a grain of salt, um, but sort of interesting conversations that I'm having with myself um, about just some of the, uh, yeah, just some of the themes that are coming up. So yeah, overall, I, I, I think it's I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be fun. I think that I am looking forward to enjoying this full moon. It is the last one of winter, and then we will be just a couple of days past, I think, the vernal equinox by the time the next full moon rolls around in March. So I'm, I'm looking forward to spring. I really am. Spring is probably overall my favorite season. It's when there's just so much growth and it's starting to get warm, but it's not hot and like, oh, I just, I love it. I love it. The city is beautiful. Every place is beautiful. Leaving the city is beautiful. Like everything just looks so pretty everywhere and I just love it. Um, but as you can see, Mr. Man is really starving to death. So I should go and feed him now. And just as an experiment, if you... Oh, did I pet you too aggressively? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I wasn't paying attention. I don't want to play that hard, but thank you. Yeah, you're a good guy. But anyhow, um, if you have by some fucking miracle, you are a person who has managed to get to this point in the video when you're still hearing the words coming out of my mouth, uh, please leave a cat emoji in the comments. I'm just curious to see if anybody will. Um, but even if not, even if I'm only talking to myself, don't forget to be kind and gentle with yourselves, and I will see you soon.